Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, beloved. Um, it happens to be evening for me right now, and I've come from uh, the community supper that we have the second Wednesday of every month. And I want to say thank you to all the people who've made that possible. It is such a wonderful ministry, and I want to invite everyone to come and join us the second Wednesday of every month. Good cookies, good food, good people. I've been thinking about uh, something over the last couple of weeks, and I think it's it's something that I have to break into. I have to tell in two parts. So I'm going to tell the first part this week, and next week the second part. Um, and the first part is becoming a new person, and the second part is, well, what do you do with this new person you are? But I want to start with this thought, and that is that there are two times in life when uh, a person is most open to being wrong, to acknowledging that their thinking, their action, their, their spirit has moved in a wrong direction, or to learn. Uh, and those two times are when we, we absolutely know that we don't know anything. So I play the guitar poorly, and if <laughs> I, no way am I getting on stage with the Rolling Stones, but if Keith Richards wants to give me a guitar lesson, I am sitting down and listening because I know that I don't know and that he does. So if Jack White, if you're listening, you want it, I'm all ears. The other time that we are opening to being wrong or learning is when we know a lot. When we are an expert in the field. When two great guitarists get together, they share ideas, they, they, they look for inspiration. Now, in those two categories, when it comes to God and our relationship with God, we are always in the first category. We are always the one that is the beginner. And so we need to come to God from a place of a beginner open and ready to learn. <laughs> and the funny thing is that being a Christian has a lot to do with, uh, with finding out that you're wrong and finding a different way. And that's hard. And I, that's why I think most people just prefer the law. They prefer rules that are laid down, that they follow, and if they know they follow, then they're in the right. And the, But the problem with that is, as God says, um, is that you can do all kinds of wrong things while you're following the law. That happens all the time. So I want to talk about something that is absolutely central to being a Christian, and that is becoming a new person. And that idea is floated throughout the New Testament. You, you will find it everywhere, in symbols, in reality, in story. You'll, you'll, see, you'll hear Jesus say, if you want to live, you have to die. You have to be born of water and spirit. You have to be born again. That idea, that theme comes throughout the New Testament. And I'm, I'll just give you one example. It's from Romans, and I'm going to leave out one verse because it sort of deals with something else. But here's the verse. Therefore, says Paul, we have been buried with him. That's the image. We have been, our old self is buried with Christ. As Christ died, we die. And through the symbol of baptism into death, our old self dies. So that, as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, so we might walk in newness of life. Our old self was crucified with him. So a repeat of the theme. Our old self is crucified symbolically with him in order that our body of sin, and sin are the things that we have done wrong the mistakes that we have made in our life so that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to that sin. 
Now, that's an interesting turn of phrase. To be a slave to sin is to be a slave of the past. Because that's all that we have. We have the present, but we have the past. We do not have the future yet. So to be a slave to sin is to be a slave to the things that you've done in the past. You have done wrong in the past. You are now a new person. You can still do wrong in the future. But right now, you do not have to be a slave to that thing. Now, a real slave can't let go of their bonds. A real slave is kept in oppression by another force. Here, it is we that hold on to the rope. It is we that continue to make the mistakes of the past. While all we have is the present. So at what point do you let go of the rope? Now, I never, ever, ever thought that I would preach on Ezekiel. What does Ezekiel have to say to me? This mysterious prophet, the wheel inside a wheel is the image that everybody knows. What does Ezekiel have to say to me today about being a new person? Well, the thing is, in, the, in chapter 11, he speaks of it, but it's in a context. So I'm going to give you the verse, which is, and I will give them one heart and put a new spirit in them. I will take their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. I will give them a real heart. And the context within that verse is this. There are two princes. Ezekiel has seen this in a vision. And later on in chapter 32, he's going to say the exact same thing. The exact same verse occurs. So it occurs in the vision first, and then it occurs in real life. So it's echoed. Metaphorically real. And it concerns these two princes who are saying vile things about the people in the city, in Jerusalem. They're gossiping. They're... They're promulgating all kinds of awful policies. They are oppressing and oppressors. And they've got their cronies. And I'm thinking, well, you know what? Uh, that, that's kind of happening today. There are people in this world that are whispering in our ears, that are telling us lies. And they think, this is Ezekiel's metaphor, it's a lovely metaphor. They think that they are the meat in the soup. They think they're the most important part. And God says, I'm going to destroy those people. And because you have listened to them, you're going to suffer because you listen to them. But I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you who I think the meat in the soup is. And the meat in the soup, the real meat in the soup, are the poor and the oppressed. And I'm going to give you a new heart to see that. You were this one thing. And I'm going to give you a new heart to see in a new way. So that you will look at things differently. You will look with new eyes because you are a new person. Becoming a new person does not mean that you don't have to deal with the past. And that's what I want to deal with next week. But the past need no longer own you. So what do you have to do to become, to start this process, to become a new person, and to have the heart that you're supposed to have? Well, there's only one way to do it. You have to surrender. You have to trust, and you have to let go. You have to be a beginner again and listen to a different voice. May you listen to that different voice. God bless.